What is small but tough, has three legs, is mostly black and a little bit of orange, answers to the name Rover and is not allowed on my bed. Correct. The new travel tripod from KNF Concept. The DA225 is the new travel tripod from KNF Concept. It comes out today. If you stumbled on this video while you were looking for one of my two hour cooking with oatmeal specials, then let me very quickly give you the bottom line of what I'm gonna say in this review. This is a great travel tripod for the money pretty much unbeatable. I am going to say a lot of good things about this and I'm going to show you a lot of details as to why I arrived at this conclusion. With the discount that uh, KNF has given my viewers, it's a no-brainer. If you're a photographer, stick around as you may hear something that's useful to you. Uh, if in fact you do need to go over to the Oatmeal channel, grab your spurtle and do so. Before we begin, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters and everybody who supports me through the website. I do appreciate your help. I'd like to shake the hand of the guy in the boardroom when they asked, who should we send our newest tripod to, to have evaluated, and maybe do a review? Somebody in that meeting stood up and said, go with Alan Walls. He was moderately unenthusiastic about our last tripod. Maybe he'll do that again. Yeah, that's a brave man right there. So what are we looking for in a travel tripod? Uh, it's something compact so we can get it to where we're going, something that doesn't weigh a ton, but something that sets up quickly, uh, that has good solid locks on the legs, a decent tripod head of some kind, uh, you just need a, something quality that folds down into a space that you can actually travel with. Accordingly, when I buy a travel tripod, I'm expecting to see a shorter than normal tripod, and I'm fine with that. Buying some extra height for a tripod that's going to be that much less stable is not a good trade-off for me. I want the stability. Now, how far you can push that depends on the quality of the materials. And this tripod is made of quality materials and very low tolerance tight fixtures. It is a joy to use and uh, it is built for, for serious business. Let me go over it from top to bottom or bottom to top, which would you prefer? Let's talk about the tripod head first, because there are a couple of things about this that uh, are a little less than perfect, but not much. The first is the quick release plate. Uh, the, the plate that fits in this is beautiful. It fits the tripod head very well, locks very securely. Uh, but the screw is too long for Nikon cameras. But if you put a uh, a locking springy type washer in there is perfect. The depth of the Arca Swiss quick release mechanism is a little shallow for my taste. It's, it's solid, it holds perfectly. I've had my D850 hanging upside down from it with supervision, of course, but I wish they had built this up a couple more millimeters to a, a slightly sturdier head. But considering the size and how well everything else is engineered, I'm willing to, to go with the, uh, the shallow Arca Swiss. It does have a nice spirit level up on top. So you've got something that uh, uh, will help you get this uh, level. The ball is large, it's 28 millimeters, and for such a compact tripod head, it's plenty big enough to hold even a fairly stout camera. This has a metal shaft on the panning lock, and it locks, it locks solidly with half a turn. The panning is really smooth, it's nicely marked, it actually has engraved increment markings all the way around. On a travel tripod, you don't necessarily want to have eight different buttons you can twist on your tripod head. For travel, you want something that does the job. And this lock holds the camera 
firmly. It is a, a fraction of a turn to go from completely uh, loose, just the way you'd want it, all the way to unmovable is less than a quarter of a turn. It's an eighth of a turn. You may recall that a few weeks ago, I reviewed the aluminum travel tripod from KNF. And one of the big problem issues for me was the fact that when you remove the ball head, which you could do just by un unscrewing it from the quarter inch screw in the base, you could also unscrew the base from the top of the center post. The issue was that if you didn't know exactly how far in to place the screw when you reassembled it, you could end up either having the ball head falling off or even worse, screwing the screw back too far so that it scratched or dented the ball of the ball head. This tripod doesn't have any of those issues. The ball head unscrews easily. The base is permanently fixed to the center column of the tripod. So there's no danger of uh, having the ball head fall off. There's no danger of uh, injuring the ball. The tripod has two center columns, a slightly narrower but still very substantial upper column that locks in place again with just a twist. They're not especially long, about 11 inches long a piece, uh, which means they're not waving about. But they give you just enough added height to where you can get the shot uh, close to eye level. With a tripod fully extended leg-wise on the narrowest setting, which is about 20 degrees, with both center posts extended, is a stable shooting platform in all kinds of conditions, including a very windy day. And even with the center posts extended, though I would rather not shoot with both center posts up, just because I don't do that in any, with any tripod. But even with that, it's a stable base and it was stable enough to hold my D850 with a 2470 F2.8 all day long. Now the center post has a hook for hanging your bag on and that will add to the stability. And just like on the other k and uh, tripods we've looked at, it's a really no problem at all to invert the center post. I would put the screw back in there to make sure you don't get dirt down in there. Don't look now, but she just said something. Oh no, it, it wasn't her, it was somebody jogging by. I am not a big fan of twisty tripod leg locks, but I was blown away by the quality of the leg locks on this tripod. First of all, their, their travel is minuscule. It's a, a half turn, maybe even a quarter turn to go from completely locked to completely free. When they're free, the legs drop from the tripod under gravity, which is something I've never seen in an inexpensive travel tripod. So the legs are free to move completely when they're unlocked, but when they're locked, they don't move. I cannot push them back in or pull them out. When they're locked, they're locked. I don't know if this is a weakness or not. They've obviously sacrificed a little bit of uh, metal from the, uh, the base, this triangular piece where the legs attach. Um, I don't know if that's ever gonna be a problem. It probably won't because of the way the, the metal's been removed from a part that isn't really load bearing and it certainly makes for a very light tripod. Uh, but, you know, time will tell if, if this is gonna be subject to wear and tear or weakening over time. Honestly, the way the thing's built, I doubt it. As with all good tripods, this one has three legs. The tripod has five segments to each leg. One of the first things I do when I look at a travel tripod is the bottom segment of the legs. If that is too flimsy, it doesn't really matter what else is going on above it. It's not going to give you a stable platform. As you can see, the bottom segment of the leg is really narrow. It's really small. It's probably uh, one and a half times the thickness of a pencil, but it feels like a solid 
uh, carbon fiber composite rod. It has no play in it whatsoever. These legs have three leg positions, 20 degrees, which is your standard upright tripod position. Then you have a 60 degree position. The final setting is 85 degrees. It would be nice if you could select a locking position between the first and the second positions. The jump from 20 degrees to 60 degrees is a bit of a long stretch. Uh, and certainly on a windier day, if I had a big bag on this thing, I would feel a little more comfortable if it was a bit wider footprint. The silver nuts that hold the leg to the base when you get your tripod, that they are loose on purpose. The legs open and close very easily, making it almost a matter of just shaking the tripod and it will fall into position. Uh, I tightened all of mine because I like a little bit more resistance uh, on the leg when I'm setting it up. There are a couple of things about the leg locks that I think need to be mentioned. Now, I often criticize on less expensive tripods that the top leg locks, these are the ones that lock it at the angle you want to shoot with, uh, are often spring-loaded. And when they're spring-loaded, there is a tendency for you to assume that uh, if, if you've released it, that it has latched into place. This uses a push-pull latch that you have to affirmatively open. You can see here that uh, in order to move the leg, I have to pull the, the uh, lock out or push it out from behind until it's in its fully open position. Then I reposition the leg and then I have to push the lock back into place. You have real tactile feedback when you engage the locks. You know they're locked and you know you have to do it manually so you're not going to ever think it's locked by itself if you haven't locked it it won't be locked so once you pick your position it's just a matter of using your thumb to push the lock back in against the the uh, detents in the leg and it holds until you reach back behind and push the lock out again so it, it's a very stable solid locking mechanism and i like it Instead of having retractable pointy feet, which is a lovely feature to have on a full-size tripod, in the interests of weight and compactness, all three of the legs have a, 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 a nobular, <laughs> I just made that word up, they have a, a little rubberized foot that's a lot sturdier than it looks. Because of its shape, it's able to hold onto everything I tried it on. I tried it on wet rocks, on mud, on sand. It's wide enough to support the granular surfaces, uh, but it's pointy enough to give you some purchase on the grass or uh, in the woods. This is my favorite haunted house. I don't know if I even mentioned this, but it comes with a really nice padded tripod bag uh, that's made of that heavy duty ripstop fabric. To sum up, I would say this, the KNF BA225 travel tripod is a really nice ultra light, ultra compact carbon fiber tripod that is enough of a tripod to where I trust it completely with any of my gear on it. In addition to being a good quality tripod. It packs down to something you could easily put in a suitcase or a briefcase, certainly in a camera bag. You wouldn't even know that you had this strapped onto the bag most of the time. It's a little shorter than you may be used to if you're using full-size tripods, and that's fine. This is a travel tripod. They're not supposed to be seven feet tall. The KNF Block Rover carbon fiber travel tripod is a bargain. And even if it wasn't a bargain, I would still recommend it. Would I buy this tripod? Absolutely, without hesitation. So what's the difference between a good travel tripod and a great travel tripod? The great travel tripod is the one that gets the balance right. It has just enough travel features to make it appealing to take on the road but it has just enough solid studio tripod feel to it that you feel it's worth carrying with you 
KNF Concert have pretty much nailed it. They have that balance of travel and tripod just right. The bottom line, buy one of these tripods. You won't regret it. It's a wonderful little tripod and uh, I think you will agree. Thank you.